It's Wes. Simple Wes, that is. In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between volume control and pressure control, or a volume type breath and a pressure type breath. Now, right now, we're in the, the volume type breath. Two important settings here that we're going to just talk about as we do this. The breath rate is one, also called the respiratory rate. They, right now, it's set at 12. That's the minimum amount of breaths that the ventilator will deliver per minute. Those are mandatory breaths. The patient can take spontaneous breaths in between, but at the very least, they'll get 12 breaths per minute. And in a volume type breath, the tidal volume is active. Right now, that's at 800 milliliters. That means that the ventilator is gonna to try to give 800 milliliters of volume with every breath. And it will push harder and harder to do that because it wants to try to maintain this 800 milliliters. The one thing that will stop it from getting that 800 milliliters of air is if the pressure goes too high. And in this case, that's 45 centimeters of H2O. If it goes above 45, it will alarm with high pressure. It'll stop that breath immediately and let the patient breathe out. And then it'll try again with the very next breath. That high pressure limit is usually indicative of congestion, phlegm building up, or bronchospasm, or inflammation of the airways. Typically with patients above the age of five, they will have a volume type breath. The one exception to that is usually if the patient is in ARDS, their pressures, or for some reason their pressures are going really high, then the, the doctor may order them for pressure on pressure control. When we switch over to pressure control, all of a sudden this tidal volume is dim and the pressure control number is illuminated. Still, the ventilator is gonna to try to give 12 breaths per minute. But what is different about this is that it doesn't care how much volume they get. What it cares is that the pressure does not go too high. In this case, it's 18 centimeters of H2O. That means it's gonna give 18, 18 of pressure for one second. It doesn't care how much air they get, it cares that the pressure doesn't go too high. And you can see up here on the waveform, they're gonna get that 18 with every breath or every mandatory breath. One thing to be careful of in the pressure control mode is that if your patient becomes congested or they have some sort of uh, constriction, inflammation, or bronchospasm, the high pressure alarm will go off because it is limiting their pressure. But what will happen is their exhale tidal volume will go down significantly because they're not getting any air. Usually in the volume control mode, you'll hear a high pressure alarm to let you know that. But in the pressure control mode, you will see some drastic signs and symptoms from your patient, but you will not hear the alarm. What will happen is, or they won't get as much volume, so they'll start to get short of breath, they'll start breathing faster because they're not getting as much air in, and you'll see the, the increased respiratory rate and the signs of symptoms of distress on their face and in their body. Typically, the people that get pressure control mode are patients under five years of age. Under five years of age, their lungs are, are more susceptible to barrel trauma or pressure damage from the ventilator, so it's very common to use this mode in pediatric patients, neonatal patients, to, to ensure that they don't have that pressure damage to their lungs. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.